All right, we're back in Plane Maker, and I decided to restart this file just so that we can get all the steps unified in one tutorial. So let's start out by reappending that object file that we exported from Blender. Add, go here, we browse to X01, open object, and there we have the airplane. Let's just make sure that we set the shadow mode to all views. And just to recap, in case you didn't know this, you can move the plane forward and backwards, sideways, and up and down by using these controls here. And you can also rotate every part that you import. And if we set this project to be in metric units, then again, it'll snap into place with discrete values that we enter as movement criteria. In this little window here, we can enable and disable the visualization of that object we just imported. And to temporarily hide the aerodynamic parts of this plane, you can go to this menu and select part visibility. You can either hide all parts or show all parts. For now, I'm going to leave the fuselage out because it's just big and bulky and round and it's covering my view of stuff. So what I'd like to do here is do the bare minimum to get this plane up and flying in the X-Plane Sim. So we start out with the main wings and then with the tail assembly and then we give it some wheels and some props, give it some weight and balance. We adjust the pilot's view and then we also have to enter the VNE so that the plane doesn't crash. But let's start out with the wings. We go to standard and go to wings. We start out by giving the wings some dimension, any dimension is fine. And then I just go ahead and punch in these values. I'm not gonna worry about the tapering for right now. That can be done later on when we customize the cords here. But I do wanna eliminate wing flex for this plane. Next, we go to horizontal stabilizer, do the same thing, start out with something that makes itself visible. Next, we go to vertical stabilizer. So lots of tweaking goes into it, but you'll find that it's not a difficult process at all. So now I have the main wings, the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer. Next, what I want to do is I want to cut out some control surface slots for these wing surfaces. On the vertical stabilizer, we'll have a rudder, and it's going to span the entirety of the vertical stabilizer. These would represent roughly ribs. So you would imagine there would be four subdivisions here to this flight surface, which we can assign control surfaces to. The horizontal stabilizer will have an elevator across the entirety of its span as well. The main wing will have flaps on the inboard and ailerons on the outboard. Now, in order to get these to move properly, we have to head over to the control geometry tab. This determines the chord ratio at the root and the tip of the wing. Usually 0.2 is enough. And 10 degrees up and 10 degrees down should suffice for a test flight. Then we have the elevator, also 0.2 and 0.2. I'm just guessing these values, but I think they're going to be pretty good values. Rudder 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 10 degrees and 10 degrees. And for the flaps, we're going to have a root and chord ratio of 0 0.2 as well. But we have three detents. So the first detent will be 10 degrees, the second one 20 degrees, and the third one 30 degrees. And it will take about five seconds to extend and retract. We can see the control surface is moving there. If we want to get a better picture, we can always hide the OBJ file. And this is what we've got so far. This is what X-Plane looks at to determine the flight characteristics of the plane. Next, let's do the wheels. We start out by giving the wheels a radius and a width, and then giving them a leg length. Then we move them into position, longitudinal arm this way, and then vertical arm down. We could be a little bit more precise and try to follow the angle there, which we can do by just simply extending it forward a little bit like that and then repositioning it. And we can copy the values for tire radius and semi-width and also leg length to the other two tires. Then we move them down and back. Then we turn this plane on its side. And we notice that maybe the tires are all a little bit too wide. Now we want to move this main gear laterally. And next we want to start working on the fuselage. So in order to create a good fuselage, we need a nice side screenshot and a nice top screenshot. So let's get those right now. There's a screen grab tool in Windows that allows you to hit Windows Shift S and I set my mouse crosshair right on the top corner of this vertical stabilizer and drag it and it needs to be dragged right to the tip of the nose and to the bottom of the wheel base there and then you let go and I'm going to go ahead and save this in my project file in my Lego plane objects and I'll call it side.png. Next, I'm going to go here and go background top. And for this next screenshot, I want to place my cursor on the top right corner of the horizontal stabilizer. I make a snapshot. I drag it out. I make sure that the bottom matches the left side of the horizontal stabilizer and that the tip matches the left edge of the screenshot. I'll save this one here as top. 
And now if I go to fuselage and I go to the top bottom quadrant here, I could say load top background and I'm going to go here, click on it. And under my Lego planes, I'll have a top.png, which I'll open here. And for the side, I'll go to side.png and open it here. Now you'll notice that this grid, this rough fuselage that we have, is not lining up particularly well. So there are a couple of tricks to doing this correctly. I'm going to try to walk you through what the best practices are to get this lined up correctly. First, let's unhide the fuselage. We go to Expert, Invisible Parts, and we uncheck this box so we have that back there. So now one of the goals is we need to get this front edge aligned with the nose of the plane and this back edge aligned with the tail of the plane. We go to Fuselage. Here, we're going to guesstimate 0 0.5 meters is not enough, but it's moved enough to tell me that it's probably going to be around 1.64. And that's closely enough lined up for now. For the back, the goal is to align this last segment with that end tip of the fuselage. So after we have entered those rough values, we go back to the fuselage. We'll come here and look at how many stations we might need. So one, two, we actually need an initial station to close off the nose, otherwise it remains open. The second station will be the one that coincides with this. The third station, fourth station, fifth station, sixth station, seventh station, eighth station, and ninth station will coincide again at the end of the fuselage. So if we click on this end piece, it'll create a merged vertex of all of the parts coming together here, and this is what it looks like from the side. And our goal is to make that the center point of the tip. So we'll drag this down a little bit here. And now we want to make this next ring line up with this actual distance. So we go minus 1.63. And there we have the center. And the next ring is lined up exactly with the nose. These other segments we can actually line up by dragging these points here and hitting reset this to vertical. And then here we're left with one ring that's superfluous. Now the problem we notice here is that the scale is off. This last ring does not coincide with this fuselage closing section here, even though that's how we had sized it to match the main aircraft view. So something's gone wrong with the background image size. So let's go back to fuselage and try to figure out what happened. So I do know that there's a zoom feature for these fuselage parts. And if you just hit plus and minus on your keyboard, you can actually zoom in and out. The problem is that if you get to the max zoomed out point, you're still nowhere near coinciding with the end of the fuselage there. So something else has to be done. And actually it turns out to be quite simple. What it is is that the fuselage radius isn't actually quite big enough to accommodate such a short and stubby fuselage. So let's increase this by 0.1 meters and let's see if we have a little bit more playroom now. Oh, see, this actually moved closer to the end. So we're on the right track here. Let's go 0.75. And we don't need 10 stations, we only need 9. But before we eliminate the last station, I'm going to copy these values over here and over here as well. And the reasoning is we're going to close this one off and then this is going to be the next one. So let's go ahead and remove one of the stations and let's close this one off. So we have a closed off fuselage here that pretty much matches the size of the airplane's fuselage here. So now let's give these fuselage segments a quick touch up since that resize. And I'm also finding that we have way too many control points here, so we can thin those out too. The way you do that is you go to this variable here, number of radii per side, and I think we only need five. So then to get a rough shape going here, we can just drag these down and we can give them an ellipse shape. That didn't work out too well. It calculates the average distance between these two to, to form the ellipse around. So we do need to drag this down further. I can copy these over for now. It's another technique you can use to save time. And the rest is just positioning these vertices to coincide as much as possible with the fuselage depicted in the side view. I'm not actually this fast, I'm just speeding up the video because I would bore you to tears if you had to watch all of this in real time. So this is roughly what we're looking for in terms of matching the fuselage. And then we can go back to the full model view. And here we notice that the fuselage actually became a little bit offset. And that's due to the fact that we moved all the vertices offset in such a way that it just moved the whole thing down. Well, luckily we can adjust for that. We go to fuselage, the vertical arm can be adjusted. That looks pretty good. Now without any objects, and we have pretty much a carbon copy of that plane. So let's go here and go to author. Let's enter in the name of this plane, which will be Lego plane. And that's all we'll do for here. Let's go to viewpoint and hit spacebar. We're interested now in getting this ball here 
to sit right up against that kind of as though the pilot was sitting in the plane. So for that, we go here and we go vertical arm up by four notches and forward by like three. That should be good. Next, we have to do something here, VNE. You can set it to maybe 100. Next, let's go to weight and balance. I think I'm going to give this plane maybe like 10 kilograms and a maximum weight of maybe 15 kilograms. Now let's take a look at the motors. Standard engine specs. Under one, let's give the engines maybe five horsepower. Now this is five horsepower each. We also have to give them a red line RPM. I'd say maybe 5,000. We don't need top green arc, bottom green arc, minimum or idle, because these are going to be electric motors. That's what I determine here, electric and electric. And once this data is entered, we can actually position the motors to coincide with those props. Now we can add propellers. It's got two fixed props. One goes clockwise, the other one goes counterclockwise. And they have three blades. Give it a little bit of width. We're just going to roughly match these propeller sizes with what the Lego plane actually has. Design true airspeed at prop disc. I'm going to say 70 knots. And design RPM is going to be maybe close to 5000 RPM since our red line speed is that. What this will basically do is it'll determine the twist and the bite of these props. All the rest of the stuff is irrelevant for our purposes right now, so let's try and see if we can save it. And we didn't get any errors. So now comes the big moment. Let's see if this actually works in X-Plane. First, I'm going to hide the aerodynamic parts. Save again. Load up X-Plane. And let's see what happens when we throttle it up. Oh, it's moving forward. Let's see if we have enough juice to bring it up into the air. Oh, look at that. Lift it off quite nicely. And right out of the box, it flies pretty, pretty nice. But that's probably also mostly due to the fact that Plane Maker automatically assigned a decent set of airfoils to these wings that are not like the airfoils that the real plane would have if we were to build it out of LEGO like this. Now that we have the basics of this model working in X-Plane, I think what we need to do is get back into Blender and try to see how the materials work and if we can get some color, give it some animations. And in the process, we should really learn the depths of the uh, X-Plane to Blender export script and how things work these days. I'm going to start posting links to these files, the ACF file and the Blender file and the uh, MLCAD file for this plane on xplane.org's forums. We have a subcategory there for this club where we're going to be building planes. And in the previous video tutorial, I left a whole bunch of links to different LEGO planes that you might want to try building yourself. So I'll see you soon in my next tutorial and next we'll be talking more about what happens in Blender.